Again, and this is a, a example problem from chapter two that we'll be talking about today. Um, this is actually a pretty simple problem in concept, but I chose this one because it's actually not as straightforward as well. Uh, the main idea of this is simply just on average velocity, but it's not as simple as you would might think. Once again, we're already given what the answer is, but let's see what we're given first. Okay, um, we're given uh, initial velocity. the train moving, let's assume it's moving in the same direction for an initial, call that my delta x1, thousand meters, and then for its second velocity it's gone slower. And the reason that it's in significant uh, scientific notation is before purpose of keeping it all three sig figs. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Um, our goal, well, I'm just gonna be a little bit lazy and just write it right here. Finding the average velocity of the entire uh, trip of this problem. And our formula is just simply the formula for average velocity. Okay, but I will warn you that even though this is the formula that we will be using, we're going to be using it more than once and not in the same form. Okay, so remember that you may need to change the formula around. And one important thing about this problem is that take notice, there's actually there's two parts to the motion. Okay, one and two. And so let's see. For the first part, I have already an average velocity just for that first part and uh, displacement, but I don't have the time. I don't have T1. Okay, and the same thing goes for the second part. I don't know what T2 is, but I can infer by the faster it's going for part one, then the time must be lesser than that when it's going slower. So I'm expecting uh, a bit more time for T2. Okay, so that's a little hint into the solution as well, which I'll go ahead into. So we are going to change this formula Just going to switch these out, cross multiply. Essentially multiplying both sides by delta t average velocity. And I would get delta t equals delta x over v. Or if I have this t uh, f minus t i or t minus zero, then I can just use t equals delta x over which velocity one reveals velocity two, okay? So using that formula that we just got, I'm gonna solve for the times, because that's pretty much all we can do at this point. There's no acceleration here that was mentioned, or there has to be, but we don't need it for this problem. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing for T2. And this will allow us to solve for the total time of this trip. Both of them have the same displacement, but one is going faster. Don't forget the units. Because we should see that the meters cancel out 
and it should only be left with the units of seconds which should go back on top okay and we're expecting uh, more time for t2 and sure enough this would end up being 20 seconds thousand divided by 50 and this would be uh, should be a shorter time so this would be 12.5 seconds okay and then I just find the total time honestly I'm just gonna Add that down there just to give us the T total. That'll give us 32.5 seconds. Okay. And so now with this total, this is not what I'm looking for, but it'll help me to find what I'm looking for. The average velocity of the total or the entire trip is the delta X total over the time total. So everything is totaled out. Uh, this would just be 1,000 plus 1,000 or 2,000. And our time is 32.5 seconds. And we're gonna get an answer of 62.5 meters per second, but I believe, wait a 1.5, sorry about that. And there we go. Just double checking on my own calculator here. 61.5384614, but in three significant figures, there is your answer. Okay. And that is it.